question haunting me a problem in philosophy it's a puzzle dark and deep that robs me of my sleep I wake each night at half past three wondering why I am me pondering the mystery of what it means to be One day, I was invited by an eminent scientist to a demonstration of his latest invention. An amazing way of getting from anywhere to everywhere. Note the styling of the cap. The scientist explained that it was a brand new form of transportation that would greatly benefit humanity. But he offered to let me be one of the first people to try it out. I'll give you ten bucks. His eagerness made me suspicious. I figured it was just a trick, using trap doors or mirrors or something. <laughs> I demanded to know how it was done. Okay. If you really want to know. It's just a transmission based on the miracle of radio wave. In the first booth, we convert you, and in the second booth, you are reconstituted, just like your favorite breakfast beverage. I considered taking a ride, but I had the funny feeling there was still something he wasn't telling me. Finally, the scientist admitted that his explanation was not entirely accurate. The machine, in fact, merely analyzed the contents of the first booth, then sent a description of it to the second booth, where a copy was created. The contents of the first booth were then destroyed. So, want to take a ride? I asked the scientist why it was necessary to destroy someone. Nom, 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 nom. He pointed out that if this mode of transportation became commonplace and the contents of the first booth were not destroyed, the world would be filled with unwanted replicas of everyone. Traffic jams, trying to find a parking space. It seemed immoral that a person would have to be destroyed just to take a trip. No, 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 no. The scientist asked if I would care as much if it was the copy rather than the original that was destroyed. He claimed that it was no more immoral to make a copy and then destroy it than to simply not make a copy in the first place. Uh, but that makes no sense. Everyone ends in the place they started. See what I mean? It made no moral difference whether you destroyed the original or the copy, since they were identical. But it made more sense to keep the copy since that had a point. Perfectly moral. It takes people where they want to go. Again, he invited me to go for a spin. I decided to turn the tables and suggested that he take a ride first. The, the scientist boasted that he'd ridden the machine hundreds of times and still felt fit as a fiddle. I dared him to demonstrate. Mm. Okay. To my surprise, he even agreed to repeat the experiment with the doors open. Huh? Huh? Oh. Oh. Uh -huh. Again, he encouraged me to give it a try. I insisted that I wanted the inventor of the machine to assure me of its safety. But I'm the inventor. 
but you know I'm the inventor. Look, here's the plan. Here's the work. I, however, insisted that he was a forgery, merely a copy of a copy of a copy of the inventor, and that, in my opinion, the original had long since ceased to be. The insulted scientist angrily claimed to be himself, while I contended that he was, in fact, someone else. His major credit cards, my library card, my skidoo license. Even his mother was willing to back him up. At that point, I hatched a fiendish plan. I challenged the scientist to enter the booth again, but to first turn off the part of the device that destroyed the original. But that could cause some problems. At first, he refused, but I suggested that he merely delay the destruction process by five minutes. What harm could there be in that? Hmm. Seconds later, two identical scientists emerged. Amazing results. Oh, this is this fun. fun. At first, they were entertained by comparing birthmarks. Nice birthmark. What's your favorite move? I like spinola. Until I asked which one was the original. Huh? 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 The scientist uh -huh. was beside himself. Each one insisted hmm. he was the original. Oh. Fake! Fake! Forgery! Forgery! Fraud! Fraud. I announced that original. five minutes was now up. It was time for the original to be destroyed. Oh? Oh? Suddenly, the nature of the argument changed. He's the original. He's I'm the not original. Me. No, 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 no. I never saw me before. I don't recognize you. Neither do I. To help resolve this dilemma, I suggested a friendly competition. I quickly pointed out that it was more likely that the winning scientist was the original and could defeat oh. a mere copy. So you get in there, smart guy. Uh, he threw the game. You're all against me. It's not fair. I could have lost. No, 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 don't. I don't want to die. I'll be good. I won't eat much. I want to live. Let me go. I want to live. Ah, please, please. Ah. The remaining scientist no longer insisted that I ride in his machine. Let me out of here. And suddenly, I wasn't so sure I'd done the right thing. How can I paint the deed I've done? It was a jest and all in fun. Now that I am left alone, The original me was gone, and I was now a guiltless copy. Brand new me, brand new day, no more last month's bills to pay. They were owed by another me, and she has ceased to be. Bluebird sitting on my head, aren't you glad my old one's dead? Hello, Brook. Good morning, tree. I've just begun to be. What's this body I am using? When I die, will I be losing everything that I'm now choosing to be or not to be? A simple fact, sad but true. Nothing's fun unless it's new. That's why we take turns to see what it's like to 